For those of you interested in getting great prints from your printer, welcome. We're going to talk about color workflow and custom paper profiles for desktop inkjet printers. All right, so I'm back up in my office and I'm ready to create a custom paper profile for my printer. I've got the Color Monkey Photo to do this. Uh, this kind of thing looks like a tape measure and it comes with this little pouch. And this pouch is here for when you're going to use it to profile your monitor. Uh, this strap that is here is actually weighted and it's designed to work exactly when, as if you were doing uh, with the Color Monkey display. You would just hang it on your screen like that and it will do the monitor profiling. So if you have a Color Monkey photo, you do not need to also have a Color Monkey display. But what we want it for today is we want to be able to create a custom paper profile. So the process, well, first of all, since I'm not, I'm not going to use this for my monitor since we already did that, I'm going to take it out of its pouch because with the pouch is for hanging it on the screen and we're going to need to have it this way. So let's take a look at the software. And you see we have a couple choices that look similar to when we did our display. Match my printer to my display, profile my display, and profile my printer. That's where we're after. We're going to create a printer profile. So I click on that and we're going to create a new profile. I then tell it which printer I'm going to use. I'm going to use my P600 and the paper. Let me grab the box. So here's the paper I'm going to profile first. This is Canson's uh, Rag Photographique. Hope I said it right. Uh, it's a very, very smooth rag-based kind of cotton paper. That is really nice fine art paper. So we're going to test to see how a custom profile gives us a better result or more of the tonal range possible with this paper compared to the factory profile that we'll download. So again, I'm going to use, I'll just call it Rag Photo and cancel on and then I'll hit next. So then it tells me go ahead and print out the first test chart. I've already got the paper loaded into the printer over there. I just click on print. Now when you do this you do need to make sure that the printer settings are going to be how you're going to be printing. Make sure that the paper type matches the paper that you've got in there. So I click on continue and it's going to bring up my printer dialog box. Okay so I've got my printer chosen. Now I need to tell it the settings that I'm going to use. So I'm going to go to print settings. We are printing on a matte paper and we'll call it ultra premium presentation matte. That is the closest match. And then we have photo and super photo. For doing our color profile, photo is just fine and high speed is fine. Now I just simply need to click on print. So I clicked on print and here's what came out of my printer. This is the first test chart and I'm going to have to read this in. Now you should let this dry for at least 10 minutes before you read it because most inkjet papers as the ink dries it does darken a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and click on next and it's going to come up and tell me right on the screen okay wait 10 minutes is a little timer that comes up and we'll show you. I'm going to skip the drying process because I've already done that and I'm going to click on next and then it tells me we have to calibrate the color monkey. Now the color monkey actually has its own white tile in it for white balancing so I need to spin this around so that it matches on the screen what it shows here. So I put it in that position and then I click on calibrate. Then it says rotate it around so that the little white LED right here is linked to the bottom and then you click on next. Now it's ready to read in the targets. So we can see the targets on the screen and here's how you do it. Now we're going to use this button on the side of the color monkey and we're going to start reading in on this paper and it's important that we start on white and end on white. So we're going to click and drag and then do that for each of these five rows. If you're successful in reading it then the screen will light up and tell you that you did it right. So literally click and drag. It's that fast. You don't have to do it slowly. And as we're successful, it just moves on to the next row and tells us to go ahead and read them in. So this is basically 50 patches we're reading in. And there we go. We just read in the 50 patches. That's how fast it is. So now the software is up and it says go ahead and print the second target. So I go ahead and click on print and it says make sure you use the same settings that you did when you printed the last time. So I put it back to ultra premium presentation matte and click on print and then off it goes over to my printer. We'll do the same thing. We'll let the printer print that out and we'll go ahead and let it sit for 10 minutes and dry and then read it in. Alright so uh, got myself a new cup of coffee and my print is now dry so let's read this one in and just like we did before again click start on white end on white. 
Go to the first row, click and drag. Successful on the screen, just continue moving on and read in all five rows. If you mess up, by the way, like if you pick the thing up, it will outline the, in fact, let's mess up one. Like I'm gonna like just kind of go off the paper and you see it circles in in red on the screen. So that just tells you do it again. It will just uh, wait a second, then re-outline it in yellow and that's done. Then I click on next and it asks you to give it your official name. Well, I like the name I had. I'm gonna add CMP in front of my name because that lets me distinguish that this was a profile I created with the Color Monkey photo. And I will tell it it was for the Epson P600. It's important that you have profiles for each printer uh, because the ink sets change from printer to printer. Now, if you have two different printers that have the same ink set, like I have a P600 and a P800, basically the same ink set, then you can use profiles for both printer there. Click on save and it will go ahead and generate the profile. It will give you the option to make it your default profile in all the Adobe suite. But I use a lot of different papers, so I will skip that part. And we're going to then be able to see our final profile. We can compare it to the factory one. All right, so here's the ColorSync profile. This is the ColorSync utility in, in Apple. And you can see I have the P600 RAG Photo 310 gram paper. And as I rotate it around, well, it doesn't really mean anything. But what it's showing is from light to dark, where white is on the top, black is on the bottom, and the entire color range that I can then rotate in 3D space. Now, where it gets useful is when I go ahead and overlay it with the profile I just created, which you can see is right here in the list. In fact, let's go ahead and spread out the list here a little bit. You can see here's the CMP RAG Photo Canson Epson P600, and apparently I put an equal sign instead of there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself a little more screen real estate here, and I'm going to hold this profile. This is the factory profile. Let's hold this for comparison and overlay the Color Monkey Photo profile over top. And we can see that the areas that are now in color are the Color Monkey Photo profile. And what it's done is it's given us a lot more color. The reason for this is this is a profile specific to my printer in my environment. So it really gets the most out of the paper printer combination that you can get. The factory profiles have a tendency to be a little bit more conservative because there's going to be some variations in printers and papers and inks and in the environment they're in. Let's go ahead and reverse this so we can really see. I'm going to put the Color Monkey Photo profile underneath and let's overlay the factory profile and then we get to see the areas in white. Uh, the areas in white are the places that the Color Monkey Photo was able to get out of the printer that are actually greater range, particularly down the bottom here. You can see in the very dark colors, the factory profile is causing some of the dark colors to not get their full range. It's also saying that there's a little bit more, in this case purple and green, than the printer can actually print. Now this is important information because if your image contains those colors, uh, when the rendering intent takes place in soft proofing, which we'll see in a minute, uh, it's going to cause the colors to move to maybe a slightly incorrect place. Also, it's going to compress the shadows more than it needs to. This paper actually has quite a lot of range, as we can see from the Color Monkey Photo profile. By having a custom profile, particularly with fine art papers, you're getting the most color range possible, and that's what we want to maintain through our whole color workflow. We want to lose as little color as possible so we get great prints. And there you have it. So now we can go ahead and put this to use in Photoshop and in Lightroom. Music